So thank you very much, uh, especially uh, to Yasuno and Maikawa who invited me for, for these lectures. So um, I will give a series of uh, four lectures. So the title of the lectures is um, uh, Blow Up, Compactness, and Partial Regularity for uh, Partial Differential Equations. And uh, I want to, so this is a very general uh, topic in PDE, and I want to um, look at two partic particular situations. One uh, in homogenization for the first lecture, uh, for the first two lectures, basically, and the uh, two last lectures. So this afternoon uh, will be about uh, epsilon regularity in fluid mechanics. So uh, let me introduce the uh, subject of the uh, first lectures. Um, so. about compactness methods in homogenization. So please let me know if uh, my writing is uh, <laughs> uh, good enough, otherwise I will try to improve it. Um, so this lecture uh, this morning will be based on uh, the simple elliptic equation, a divergence form, and linear, posed in a domain, uh, let's say, B0 or R. And I will be interested in uh, regularity theory for this equation. So regularity theory uh, is uh, the study of the local behavior of the solutions. And uh, you will see it to some of you who are familiar with uh, long-term behavior, study of long-term behavior of uh, PDEs. In some aspects, it has some similarities about the methods. But of course, there are uh, huge differences, but from a, a very general point of view, there are some uh, similarities. So uh, one aspect uh, I would like to uh, emphasize is that um, um, the, the global versus the local aspect. So uh, you can study uh, regularity of PDEs from a global point of view, uh, meaning that uh, you have a uh, PDE, um, so you study an initial value problem to some PDE, and um, you for example, you study the regularity of the solution in terms of um, the solution being uh, in some Sobolev space, and you can study the growth of Sobolev norms in time, etc. Um, so, in terms, for example, you can describe the regularity in terms, for example, of Fourier modes. So, this is what I call the global approach. This is the, the approach we will not take here. The approach we take here is a completely local approach, uh, meaning that um, I uh, will work in, uh, in physical space, and uh, we will assume that uh, we control uh, the solution in some uh, big ball. In some weak norm. And uh, the goal is to control uh, the solution in some smaller norm, but in higher, uh, in some smaller ball, but in higher norm. So uh, the, the goal uh, will be, for example, to have an estimate on the gradient in L infinity of, let's say, uh, B0 one half. Uh, which is controlled by uh, u in L2 of B01. So the, um, a weak norm controls a stronger norm of the solution, but in some smaller ball. So this is what I call the, the local approach in some sense. And everything I will talk about today uh, will be a local result like this. And another point I would like to, uh, to stress is uh, the fact that uh, uh, the polynomials uh, 
are the uh, building blocks of regularity theory. So uh, you can already see that uh, at the level of um, Taylor formula, for example, so when you have a, a function, you expand Taylor expand the, the solution around the point, and uh, the Taylor expansion is a polynomial uh, expansion. Um, but at the level of PDE, uh, what will tell you that uh, the uh, um, polynomials are the building blocks of regularity theory is uh, some kind of uh, Liouville theory. So all the uh, solution, all the entire solution to some uh, PD like this, so entire meaning a solution in the whole space with some uh, specific growth of, at infinity will be of uh, a specific form like constant or a first order polynomial, etc. All right, so um, now I would like to uh, underline a, a few uh, recurrent uh, topics in the lectures. So some things which will uh, come over uh, again and again. And um, so the, the first topic, so these are just uh, things to have in mind when I, when I uh, do the lectures. So the first topic is uh, uh, localization. So everything I will talk about will be local and we'll try to, uh, to localize all the time by taking test functions, etc. So this may be more or less complicated, but we uh, will always uh, try to localize. Um, the second topic is um, so second topic is uh, multiscale. So um, in in order to uh, get an estimate like this, uh, we'll compare uh, several scales. So here. Uh, uh, some large scale would control uh, their, uh, some quantity related to their solution in some smaller, at some smaller scale. So um, large scales are control small scales. So this is the, the basic uh, uh, thing in uh, regularity theory. And um, for example, we'll have a, a characterization uh, of of Holder continuity. In terms of uh, the decay of Um, the integral, so the mean, so um, uh, in bar, so this uh, symbol will all the time uh, denote, uh, yeah, the the mean. So we'll have a, a characterization of further continuity uh, of u, uh, depending on how this integral uh, grows in terms of rho. And uh, this symbol here always stands for 1 over B0 rho. So the Lebesgue measure of the set uh, times the integral over the set. All right. So uh, another point is um, a comparison to uh, polynomials. So I told you the um, polynomials are the uh, building blocks of regularity theory. So it's like in uh, Taylor formula, when you have a function, you Taylor expand, and you have a remainder. 
so you estimate the remainder. Uh, it's like, uh, here would be the same. We'll uh, compare the solution u to uh, a polynomial expansion, and we'll measure the, uh, uh, the remainder in some, uh, in some integral norm. Okay, so there, um, uh, there, this will be uh, uh, something we'll do all the time, uh, compare uh, the function to polynomials. And the simplest polynomials we'll take will just be zero order polynomials, uh, typically constants. So um, very often we'll have our integrals, so int bar over <coughs> B0 uh, row of u minus a. So where a is some constant. And um, so, um, a last uh, point I would like to emphasize is compactness. And in particular, um, improvement of flatness. So there. The basic idea of this um, uh, local regulatory estimate I will show you is um, we'll, um, we'll have a limit and uh, we'll, have some, uh, we'll take some limit and at the limit uh, we'll get an equation which, uh, for which the regulatory properties are better. So this could be, for example, um, if you take um, regular coefficients, so let's say um, the a uh, in this example is uh, regular, so let's say how that continues. Um, when you zoom in, uh, you uh, will uh, converge to, um, so for example you zoom in around zero, you will converge to uh, an equation with coefficients a of zero, which is constant. Okay, so uh, at the limit you get a constant coefficient equation, and the regulative theory for a constant coefficient equation is simpler, of course. Uh, we'll see that in a minute. And um, from this uh, improved regularity at the limit, you can get something uh, back on the original equation. So this uh, is uh, one of the key ideas, is that uh, we'll take limits and something at the limit uh, will be better. Uh, some regulated at the limit will be better. So this is one example uh, I will not talk about today, but uh, the other example is that this is when you zoom in. Uh, another example is when you zoom out. Um, and uh, when you zoom out, um, uh, so this will be, for example, uh, uh, related to homogenization. Uh, when you have a, um, uh, when you have some, uh, uh, so zooming out will be equivalent to looking at, uh, for example, highly oscillating uh, coefficients. So when you put a one over epsilon here, uh, as we will do. And um, at the limit, when epsilon goes to zero, if you have some good structure assumptions on the coefficients, for example, the coefficients are periodic, if you zoom out, uh, you will get the constant coefficient equation. And, um, and this constant coefficient equation, again, uh, has some improved regularity. And the uh, whole thing is how to go back to the original equation. So. Um, I write it here, ax over epsilon, if a is, has some structure assumption. So, of course, uh, the, the simplest structure assumption uh, we'll, we'll look at today is periodicity. 
but it could be a uh, quasi periodicity or you, you, you could uh, take a more general framework, uh, but we'll stick to uh, periodicity today. And uh, the last example were uh, this compactness, uh, so this improvement of flatness uh, appears, is uh, when you have, um, um, uh, when you take a nonlinear equation, and for some reason you know that the uh, nonlinearity is weak. So when you, uh, uh, when you take the limit, um, you will end up with a linear equation. And the uh, regularity for the linear equation is uh, simpler than that for the nonlinear equation. So you will get uh, some improvement of flatness from the linear equation. So how do I call this? Um, yeah, just by uh, improvement of flatness, just by convergence. to a linear equation. So this will be the topic of uh, this afternoon's lectures, so about epsilon regularity. Um, and this will be uh, the topic of uh, this morning, about homogenization. All right. So, um, but these uh, ideas of uh, improvement of flatness for regularity theory are originated in the, in the work of um, um, in the work of uh, Algren. In, uh, in 68, so about their um, study of their uh, regularity of minimal surfaces. And then uh, a lot of people uh, um, uh, used these ideas and uh, applied it to uh, calculus of variations. So I just uh, said some names. Uh, of course, the list is uh, far from being exhaustive. Uh, so Evans, Gary P, uh, Jacquinta, so this is just to, to have some names. Uh, so this is in uh, calculus of variations. And, um, and then these ideas from calculus of variation were further taken to uh, the field of uh, fluid mechanics. Uh, so for example, for this uh, epsilon regularity results. And uh, today's lecture uh, will be based, so uh, this morning's lectures, are based on uh, two, I, I mean, a series of papers of uh, Avellaneda and Lin. And especially two, uh, one in 87 and one in uh, 91. All right, so, um, so now I would like to start uh, the, uh, the real uh, uh, math part um, by introducing an inequality which is at the, the key of regularity theory for elliptic equation, which is the catchable inequality. So, <clears throat> so again, I will uh, consider the equation I, uh, I mentioned before. So 
So now in the fixed domain B01 in RD. And um, I will assume that um, A is uh, so A is a function of X is measurable. is um, elliptic in the sense that um, there exists a lambda strictly positive such that uh, lambda size square uh, uh, bounds from below a of x xi dot xi uniformly in psi. How do you put the psi in the minus? It's, it's a uh, okay. <laughs> zero, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now the, uh, this is just a habit. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I, I will always put minus sign because I'm just used to it, but uh, um, this is just a... Okay. And... Um, so it's elliptic and it's uh, bounded from above. Uh, so there exists L such a positive such as this one. So uh, yeah, you have to keep in mind that A uh, is a matrix. A is a so A is um, a matrix of entries A alpha beta with alpha and beta in, uh, in one D. Um, but it could even be, uh, uh, so this is uh, an equation and I could even consider systems. So I could even consider, uh, so I just mentioned it here. So by the way, uh, everything I will uh, mention today works for this system I right talk about now. Um, but I will use the, the equation notation because it's simpler. But everything will work for systems. So the systems would be, uh, I have a u, which is not a scalar function, but a u of x, which is in Rn. And I uh, have an a, which is a alpha beta, ij with um, uh, ij in 1n. Okay, so the, the way to make sense of this equation is with using, uh, so, uh, so the minus divergence A gradient U is D alpha, A alpha beta of X, D beta U is equal to zero. And, um, Okay, so here I'm using uh, Einstein's convention about repeated uh, indices, uh, which I will do sometime uh, during the convention. So when the indices are repeated, uh, I'm just summing on that. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so now um, I will uh, uh, have a, a first estimate, which is really crucial, which is a Cacciopoli inequality. So, um, so I will take a cutoff function. So I want something which is local. So of course I have to take a cutoff in uh, in space and, uh, and uh, in order to localize. So I will take a cutoff phi. Um, so given uh, r, uh, let's say uh, zero, rho, and r. I will take a cutoff phi, which is uh, one on a B zero row. Uh, let's take it uh, infinity compactly supported in B one, 
and uh, the support of phi is contained in uh, B0 R. And uh, I want to bound on the derivative. So nabla phi in L infinity will be bounded by uh, 2 R minus rho minus 1. So phi is really just So now I will uh, test my equation against phi square times u. So if I test the equation against phi, uh, phi square times u, I get that uh, 0 is equal to so the integral over uh, b01 of a um, so a of x gradient u, and then a gradient of a, um, u phi square. So either the gradient uh, hits the u or it hits the phi square. So this is equal to B01, A of x, gradient u dot gradient u, phi square, plus B01, A of x, gradient u dot, uh, so 2, gradient phi, u times phi. So under so under um, so I can use a um, I can use ellipticity, so I get a of x gradient u that gradient u. I'm sorry. The norm of u square. Now let me keep it like this. Um, so gradient u times phi square. And on the right, I get um, so 2 times um, gradient u times phi square, 1 half, times the integral over b01 of um, a few um, u times gradient phi. So you write this that that uh, so that uh, equation, the second uh, line, is, is it correct? The second the pi is already uh, is nabla pi. So do you need to write pi? Uh, I, I, oh, put the, oh, I put the fight oh, with the gradient oh, u. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. And so the, uh, this term I cannot absorb in the left hand side. So I get one half, and then this term is not here anymore. And then the, uh, this term I can bound by uh, gradient phi. Uh, in L infinity times an integral over B0 R minus B0 rho 
of u squared. Okay, and eventually this is smaller than um, this is smaller than um, one over r minus rho, and I get that lambda gradient to times phi square is smaller than. Um, smaller than uh, so lambda square one over r minus rho square b zero r minus b zero rho u square so let me write it like this with some constant here which depends on L, lambda, and maybe the dimension. <coughs> so here I can uh, also remove the, the phi because I uh, can bound this from below by the integral on B0. So uh, this is Cacciopoli inequality, and this gives you uh, an estimate of the gradient of u on the smaller ball by an estimate of u on, on the bigger ball, or even better, on the, on the ring B0R minus b 0 And actually, uh, I could do uh, the same computations for uh, not only u, but u minus xi squared. So where xi is any real number. Uh, because, because xi is a solution of the equation. So I can do the, the same proof uh, by getting this. And this is really the key tool uh, of the regulative theory I will talk about. So uh, let me show you just a nice application of, uh, of this, uh, which is uh, uh, the so-called uh, hole filling trick. So uh, by an observation of uh, Wittmann, so Wittmann's hole filling trick. And um, so, so first you notice that if I have, a, if I have a, um, um, an equation with constant coefficients, um, what I did for u, I can always differentiate the equation, and it will work for nabla u and nabla square u, etc., etc. So I can iterate this inequality for um, uh, for uh, for um, an equation with constant coefficients. And then I will get a bound on uh, nabla k u for uh, arbitrary large k. And then I get the smoothness of my solution because it will be in uh, all our sub of space. So I already get smoothness of solutions for a constant coefficient equation. Um, but here I would like to talk about our, uh, equations uh, only with um, um, measurable and bounded coefficients. So the constant here, the, the very important point is that it only depends on, on, the, uh, on the bound, L infinity bound you have on the coefficients and the ellipticity constant, and nothing else. Not on the regularity of the coefficients. That's the fundamental point. And so, um, so for uh, just uh, bounded measurable in, uh, so I can iterate the, uh, the, the inequality. So I can uh, have, so 
So if I take r is equal to one half and rho is equal to uh, no, r is equal to one and rho is equal to one half. So I have that b zero one half of gradient u square is bounded by um, a constant over uh, oh, sorry, let me just check. Yes, uh, some constant uh, times the integral of a b zero one minus b zero one half of u square. And uh, from this, I can apply Poincaré's inequality. So I get that this is uh, smaller than another. Uh, so I, I take the same notation for the, for the constant. OK. And now you recognize that this is. Uh, the integral over b01 of gradient u square minus the integral over b01 half of gradient u square. Okay, so I can put uh, this part here on the left hand side, and I simply get um, b01 half of gradient u square is smaller than c over c plus 1 the integral over b01 of gradient u square. So I get some um, uh, constant here which is strictly smaller than 1. And I can iterate. So if I uh, iterate this trick, uh, I end up with uh, the integral over b01 over 2k of gradient u square is smaller than c over c plus 1 at the power k, b01 of gradient u square. So eventually, um, I can uh, get from this inequality that for any row, uh, and zero one half, and if I let so this is just simple computation. So if I let alpha uh, be, um, uh, so I just give it to you log of c plus one over c over two log of two. I get that uh, the integral over b zero rho of gradient two square is bounded by c rho to alpha times the integral over b01 of gradient u squared. So this is uh, the key inequality. And um, in dimension two, This inequality gives me that uh, u is holder continuous uh, with, uh, so u is C0 alpha. So in dimension two only. So u is C0 alpha of B0 1 over 2. So this is in dimension two only. Um, uh, so we'll see uh, why this uh, implies holder continuity. And in the higher dimensions, I just mentioned it. Um, we have a there, so d bigger than uh, three. We have the the Georgi Nashmoza estimate. which also give uh, that uh, solutions to elliptic equation with bounded measurable coefficients are held continuous with some exponent. Uh, but with uh, 
more into uh, more complicated methods. So in, in dimension bigger than three, you have to work uh, much more. And moreover, uh, this, so U is uh, CISO alpha, but the techniques are completely different. And moreover, you, um, this only works for equations, n equal to one. So this is the only result which only works for equations, which I mentioned today. And um, and um, and there are counterexamples. Yeah, there are counterexamples for n uh, bigger than one and d are big, uh, bigger than three counterexamples. To hold a continuity for the counterexamples, you can. Have a look to uh, the book of uh, Jack Winter. Uh, for example, multiple integrals, uh, and uh, or or Jack Winter Martinez. Because um, if I take r and rho, so r will be one rho. So this is one half. Okay. So this is our. Eventually, uh, it's between this step and this step. So I get two c here. But uh, and then I don't iterate uh, this inequality, but I iterate this inequality. So um, so this is two c if you want, and then I get two uh, c over 2c plus 1, and I iterate this one. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Okay. Other questions? Because I will, uh, I will now start uh, talking about If we substitute c plus 1 for c plus 5 or c plus 6, that uh, equality, inequality still hold? c over c plus 1 or c plus mm -hmm. 5, c plus 10, or? Yeah. Uh, it will still uh, hold the uh, um, I mean, the, the, the plus one you get from here, from this, uh, from this one. So I don't think, uh, uh, I mean, that would change the constant capital C and no, I don't think so. Yeah. Are there other questions? All right, so um, now I would uh, really like to, to start the topic of uh, homogenization and, and to and of, uh, improved uh, regularity. So I will talk about uh, C1 alpha improved regularity. So um, here I uh, will consider again a, a divergence from elliptic equations, but instead of taking non-oscillating coefficients, I will take highly oscillating coefficients. So I will put an uh, epsilon here, written Q, in uh, again the fixed domain B zero one, and I will uh, take a again are uh, uh, measurable elliptic with constant lambda and um, uh, bounded 
and periodic. So ZD periodic. So this is really the fundamental point. And I will denote this class of A by A um, this uh, A of um, L lambda and per for periodic. Because I will uh, prove result uh, uniform for matrices uh, uh, uniformly in this class. So, uh, I need to get a notation for this class. And so here the topic is um, um, somehow we'll um, use the limit one epsilon tends to zero, uh, for which we get we'll get a constant coefficient equation. So with uh, improved regularity properties, to get um, regularity estimates on new epsilon uniform in epsilon. So the goal is uniform, um, so regularity estimates uniform in epsilon. And um, in the title, I have improved regularity. And the improved regularity uh, will only hold on scales, um, on large scales. So that means if you consider the scales from uh, 0 to 1, and if you have 1 half here, and epsilon here, the improved regularity will only hold uh, for this case, from epsilon to one half. So these are the scales where the regularity of the solution, in some sense, is determined by their uh, homogenized equation at the limit. Below, between zero and epsilon, you will need uh, some smoothness on the coefficients to have the smoothness of the solution. So I will make this more precise in the lectures uh, later, but. And this is something to keep in mind. Uh, when I talk about improved regularities, it's really the regularity uh, which I get for epsilon between, uh, for R, for scales between the small scale epsilon and one half. But below, I have to use the regularity of the coefficients to get the regularity of the solutions. Um, okay, so. Um, so before talking about uh, regularity, uh, I need to talk to tell you some things about homogenization. So. Um, So, there, so homogenization is the idea that uh, you have an equation with uh, oscillations and at the limit the oscillations uh, average and you get something, uh, a constant coefficient equation. So one of the key objects uh, to construct, uh, to talk about the limit and to construct our expansions for u epsilon is what we call the correction. So uh, the cell character here in periodic homogenization, which is a function, um, which is a solution to the um, equation minus divergence a of y <coughs> gradient y plus k of y is equal to zero in Rd. So, um, so y for me is always the uh, blown up uh, scale, so the fast variable x over epsilon, in some sense. And so chi is a periodic function. Uh, so that um, 
this y plus k of y is a solution of this equation in the whole, in the whole space. So y of uh, plus k of y is um, uh, what I call an a harmonic function. And, um, and to have a unique uh, k, I also impose that the mean of k over the terms, so td, is 0. So in that way, I can define a unique k, uh, which will set this equation. And that uh, you can easily get in, uh, in periodic homogenization uh, when the a is uh, periodic. But if you had a more complicated uh, structure, like quasi-periodic or even random, it's not at all clear that you could solve this equation. So here it's very easy to solve, and that's one of the uh, crucial simplification of uh, periodic homogenization, is that this equation is very easy to solve, and once you have the correcture, uh, you know almost everything about the solution, at least up to order one in epsilon. Um, and uh, in, in more, if you have a more complicated structure, uh, this is really one of the main topics, for example, in the developments of, um, of a random homogenization in the last years was uh, to analyze the correctors and to get bound on the growth of the corrector at infinity. But here, we easily get that, uh, uh, we easily get uh, the solution to this problem plus the corrector is bounded. Okay, so once you have this corrector, uh, you can uh, uh, expand uh, u epsilon. Uh, so formally, as some, uh, you would like to expand it as some u bar of x. So u bar will solve some uh, uh, homogeneized equation with constant coefficient. Plus um, <coughs> epsilon k x over epsilon gradient u bar. So this is uh, typically the the, and, uh, the ansatz you would expect for uh, u epsilon. And if you um, look at this close to a point x naught. So this would be uh, u bar x naught plus epsilon x minus x naught over epsilon plus k of x over epsilon dot gradient u bar. So this is uh, formally, but just to give you an intuition. So the, the thing I will do uh, in the proofs will be to compare this uh, solution u epsilon to this um, kind of polynomial, so this is a constant plus polynomial with some correction. Okay. So I will call this uh, A uh, harmonic linear functions. And I will um, compare my solution to this uh, A harmonic uh, linear functions in order to get uh, C1 alpha uh, regularity. Um, okay, so, and U bar, as I told you, uh, will be the solution uh, to the homogenized. equation with uh, constant coefficients. So the homogeneous equation is minus divergence a bar gradient u bar is equal to zero with a bar which is uh, given by the mean of a of y plus some correction. And the correction is coming from the, from the corrector. 
Okay, so you don't need to remember the exact formula, but just remember that the A bar uh, is constant and uh, it's the mean of A plus some correction due, the, due to the uh, special structure. Yeah. And, um, and so these A harmonic uh, linear functions, you really see that as a, um, as a linear functions, plus some, uh, some kind of wiggles, plus some small oscillations on the, on the polynomial, uh, on, the, on the linear function. So, so now I will, uh, I will prove uh, the key lemma, which is uh, about the convergence, um, the weak convergence of uh, the u epsilon to the u bar. And, and this lemma will be crucial for the, for the analysis of the record. So, um, so the lemma is the following. <coughs> so the lemma basically tells you that um, the solution to the original equation Converge to the uh, homogenized equation, um, and this is not uh, at all trivial. Uh, for one reason, I will mention uh, uh, right after the lemma. So I take uh, a in a um, for lambda l. And epsilon k going to zero. And I assume that um, so uk is a, a family of solutions to um, A of x over epsilon greater than u. So it's a family of solutions to this equation. And UK is uh, bounded in uh, W12 uh, of B01. So I have a, a bound in a, uh, on, UK, uh, on UK in L2 plus its derivative in L2. Then up to a subsequence, so I can extract the subsequence. UK converges uh, strongly in L2 to some U bar. So this is strong in L2 of B01. Uh, the gradient UK converges weakly to gradient u bar in L2 of B01. So convergence of the gradient is weak. And uh, the last point, which is uh, the main point of the lemma, is that Ax over epsilon k gradient uk converges weakly to A bar gradient u bar. So again, this convergence is weak, and this is actually the main uh, result of the lemma. So um, why is uh, particular this convergence not trivial? So this convergence is not trivial because UK is only converging weakly. AK is a periodic highly oscillating function, so it's only also conver uh, converging weakly. Uh, to its uh, mean. So I have the product of two weakly converging uh, sequences. So it's not at all clear that the uh, limit will be the product of the weak limit. I mean, uh, actually it isn't. So because we know that the A bar is uh, not only the, the mean of A plus, uh, but the mean of A plus some correction. 
So, um, so the main point of the lemma is to prove this. And I could, um, and uh, what I actually need is a slightly more complicated version of this lemma, but I will prove it in that way. Um, where I also have a sequence of uh, matrices A keys. Uh, so why do uh, I need this? Because I will prove uh, results which are uniform in this class of matrices. So I need to uh, to, to get the matrix A key here. And, and there is an analogous uh, version of this lemma. Uh, but uh, the, the key thing to understand is, is about uh, fixed A. So, so I guess it's um, 45 or something. Yes. Um, yeah, maybe we make a short break and then uh, resuming.